this is in the context of the most recent news out of the Gaza war, which is that there is a recent ceasefire where they are attempting to negotiate the exchange of certain hostages. And I just want to make two points on the recent news, which is uh, going to be very relevant to applying our topic to recent news. One is the Catholic distinction between a ceasefire and a peace treaty. The ends of world, I would say that modern warfare does not know how to have a peace treaty because modern warfare is thoroughly un-Catholic. There's almost no just wars out there in the past 200 years, I, I would assert, or besides maybe the Cristero War. Um, and a, a peace treaty is the restoration of justice. Uh, a ceasefire is like, we're just going to stop killing each other. That's what we're doing. Okay, that's good. We're going to stop killing each other. But the end of World War I, for example, there was a ceasefire, but there was a punishment of the German people, which ultimately led to a disaster called World War II. Following that, there was another punishment of the German people, and there was there was really no true peace treaty. In fact, I would I would argue we're still fighting the Second World War in a many in many ways because there was never really a peace treaty that truly restored justice. And so the problem with that is that in this current conflict between Gaza and Israel, which is part of a larger conflict, which is decades and decades old, it cannot be thoroughly resolved without a true peace treaty, which is the restoration of justice. And so we've got injustices on both sides. It's not a black and white issue. There's Catholics on both sides. There's Catholic Arabs. There's Catholic uh, Israeli citizens of various ethnicities. There's Hebrew Catholics. And there's been injustices suffered by both sides. There's been massacres and, and kills, killing of innocents killed on both sides. And there can't really be a lasting peace without a, a true peace treaty. But then that brings to the second point. And the second point is this, that I would argue that the religion of Islam and the life of Muhammad does not produce a, a, a religious context to create a lasting peace treaty because uh, Muhammad, the life of Muhammad, which we'll get into, he showed the he became a warlord and he became magnanimous to his enemies after he had overthrown them and, and conquered them. And there is a certain there is a uh, there is a place in Sharia law for minorities, but it's not a place of justice. They have to pay the jizya, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not really something that is conducive to creating that. And on the other side, the, the rabbinic Judaism, Orthodox Judaism teaches that there is a thing called the Jewish virtue of hatred. And there's not a concept of forgiveness as we have in the Catholic church. And I don't believe that their side really has a, a religious basis for a, a true lasting peace treaty either. So what is the solution? The Catholic church, as always, the Catholic church can mediate this and can actually mediate a, a true lasting peace treaty, but only if everyone listens to the Catholic church. Comments, gentlemen, before we get into our main topic. Go ahead, Nick. One thing I was reminded of, I think, while you're presenting that is how revolutionary the teaching of Christ really is in opposed to our fallen human nature. Um, I think when you're brought up in, if you will, the broader Christian context, you're oftentimes, you take certain teachings for granted. You take a lot for granted at growing up in faith. And you hear this concept of forgiveness, et cetera, and it kind of just you know, after a while, that's kind of a second nature thought that comes to mind whenever offenses take place is forgiveness. But when you compare and contrast the teaching of our Lord to the various worldviews that are around the earth, you see how radically different it is to where, you know, individuals who are brought up in these other religions or in other contexts, um, how they have a justification that perhaps comes immediately to mind for some type of violent action. And I'm just reminded of how we as Catholics, rather than, I see a lot of Catholics focusing so much in on the politics of this current fighting, particularly here in the West. And I understand that tendency. I'm not saying that there's, you know, a, a wrongness in, in looking at it from the realm of politics. But I think that we first and foremost have to approach it from the perspective of, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of peace. Being, as St. Paul says, you know, if you will, in a, in a minor sense, the ministers of reconciliation. We need to be those who are going and praying for peace, those who are going and desiring for 
conflicts to stop um, rather than one side or the other, if you will. In a, in a total or maybe immoral sense, getting their just desserts, you know. So as an example, just to give one mere example, and you can use this with either side. I see a lot of Catholics, particularly in YouTube comment sections and online, who will 24-7, for, as, as an ex example, blast the state of Israel. And rather than having perhaps say just a just critique of it, which I think is licit and valid and normal, right? You should be able to have that of any society. I think even, of course, of our own camps. Um, rather than doing that, I see people just falling into the same old political partisanship um, where all of a sudden now they are justifying the religion of Muhammad <laughs> as, as Catholics than just saying, hey, you know, maybe like both of these sides have a lot of issues because there's no righteousness in it. So we have to put our priorities in perspective and make our priorities the priorities of the cross. Mm -hmm. The priorities of the cross, that, that sums it all up. Amen. Father, what are your thoughts? Well, that no, that dovetails nicely into what I was thinking. As you were kind of reflecting a minute ago, Tim, I was thinking that the... Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm getting my timelines confused. Nicholas, you said that this uh, Catholic perspective and, and the forgiveness sort of transcends and isn't really present in these kind of religions. And so it's radical. And what it made me think of was that passage from Benedict's book, Tim, that we read that we're actually going to cover again next week um, regarding the ascension. Uh, so there was the one passage about Jesus not being a zealot, right? Not using the means of violence to achieve his ends. Uh, and then there's that other passage of the ascension uh, which I, I don't want to get into it because we're, like I said, we're going to be having a another episode soon. So we don't want to get these too, uh, too, too much mixed up. Suffice it to say that the difficulties with uh, having a society based on religion, where you also have to live with a significant population of those who aren't in that religion, I think the, the challenges become well, almost insurmountable, not totally, but almost, especially when you don't have this concept of forgiveness. So, you know, thinking of like the, the theocracy that Islam wishes it were, and in many places is in fact, uh, the non-Muslims in that area, if there are any, are not treated as if they... Well, it's, it's not justice, like you mentioned before, Tim. And, uh, you know, even though Israel isn't uh, a theocracy, it is mostly Jews. So again, you have uh, followers, or, or at least culturally, of this one religious system in very close contact with others who don't agree. And again, the lack of uh the concept of forgiveness and maybe to some degree tolerance um I, i'm not saying that you can't have um, a confessional state because that's what this boils down to but that it does seem to be particularly difficult to have a confessional state and have plurality and so since they have plurality islam and israel uh need to in order to be able to move past this, they they need to stop having the mindset, if this is their mindset, of you know some form of theocracy or uh, officialness to to whatever uh, whichever side. Does that make sense? I well, feel like yeah, I'm I, rambling, but and that that's that's cut like that's what I'm asserting, which I can't really prove right now because we have we have a yeah. whole series on all that. If you if you'd like to get the whole proof of that, uh, but the 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 point is historically only the Catholic Church can have a confessional state where actually there is not an injustice to the minorities. In practice, obviously, that's another story. But in terms of the religious content, the content of the faith, which provides justice for and toleration for even minorities and even non-Catholics. And this is with the Jews in particular. So you want to go into that topic, go to meaningofcatholic.com slash register. And you can get 19 plus hours of conversation of all the nitty gritty of all these things that we can't talk about on YouTube because they don't like us talking about 